DVR. I saw your DVR. Yes. Harassing innocent people. <laughs> one cloud. Give me cloud. Sucking on his. Licking Wake's hand. I want to say one thing up on the stream. We got Kick.com is the best streaming platform. Provoking a dude into a fight. Oh, get him away. Get him away. I mean, there's people pushing people into moving trains. TwitchCon 2024 happened last week, and despite the fact, for the most part, it was a great experience, you know, streamers got to go around streaming. Wow! <laughs> And obviously one of the best parts of TwitchCon as well is you're able to meet your favorite parasocial streamer. There was also lots of fun panels and shows. I didn't end up going to TwitchCon, mostly because of the fact that I don't know if I'm allowed to go to TwitchCon, especially after they soft banned me well over a year ago. Like I must be the only case on Twitch where someone isn't banned. Like I still can stream, but there is no way to make any sort of income from it. So that there was just no point. I moved over to YouTube. But one event I will be attending is PAX in Melbourne, Australia. Australia. I'll be there for one day only, the 11th of October. We're also selling some exclusive Darkwood posters over there as well. If you, you know, already got a shirt and you wanted to double up. All the links for that, by the way, will be down in the description. But I do want to talk about TwitchCon because I feel like any kind of major streaming event, unfortunately, you get the degenerates. And apparently during TwitchCon, a lot of the kick streamers had to ruin the fun for everybody, which really isn't surprising, by the way. I feel like the four horsemen of the apocalypse, there'll be like a secret fifth one just called kick yeah you've got famine war pestilence and then xqc contract now before twitchcon even started people already had the memes ready as you know twitter is full of engagement bait like for example this tweet of dr disrespect dancing with a child <laughs> It really does go to show that Twitter is the number one place to show you how terribly things can age. So before we get into the bad stuff, I think it's good to talk about the, the wholesome chungus moments. So there was one funny highlight when Tyler One had a meet and greet and Ludwig actually snuck into the meet and greet pretending to be like a fan, obviously wearing like a hygiene mask so his face was covered. And then he did the reveal right in front of Tyler. <laughs> There was also a train that was blocking the convention center for around half an hour, so no one could actually move. Everyone was basically completely stun locked. There was also a huge variety of shows and panels that, to be fair, had like pretty big production value. Or if you didn't care about that, maybe you could go to TwitchCon to enlist in the Navy. They had a stand. There's a picture here with uh, Isabel in Smash in the corner. I always find it really funny that there's so many army recruitment places in like pretty much every single expo around the world. When I used to do Insomnia in Birmingham before that closed down, like you would always have stands about like the Royal Marines or the army. They always try to specifically target gamers because they think like, well, okay, you're not really amounting to much, are you? You're, you're kind of wasting your life, right? Why don't you join the army and do something? But you know what? I'm going to tell you now very bravely. Do not do it. Become a gamer. Become an esports player. Become a YouTube commentary channel because then you get to waste other people's time and get paid for it. However, unfortunately, as much as I wish I could make this video a whole song and dance about how amazing TwitchCon was, there was some more drama. There's always drama. But first, thank you to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. Now, I'm pretty sure you've seen about 2,000 Opera GX sponsors, but did you know that Opera GX now has GX mods? With GX mods, you're able to fully customize your browser experience. Have you ever wondered to yourself, do you want to hear farts every time you type on the keyboard? Well, now you can. There's background music, keyboard sounds, opening and closing tab sounds, mods dedicated wallpaper, disabling and enabling mods in individual modifications in the mods menu. I mean, just look, just look how many mods there are. I personally love the cyberpunk one because even if the game fell off a little bit, this plugin certainly hasn't. <laughs> Not to mention as well, every single app you have can be accessed conveniently on the sidebar. Discord, TikTok, WhatsApp, Facebook, Messenger. Are you still using that? Jesus Christ. And also, who can forget other search browsers? They hog all of your resources. I mean, just look at this comparison between Opera GX and the browser that you're probably using right now. That's because Opera GX has GX control where you can limit the amount of CPU and RAM usage you have. It's sad to say your current browser is dead. I know this is obviously a shill, but I do actually use Opera GX myself. Like anytime I'm streaming, I basically just use it as my default search engine. Stop browsing like a clone and get with a real one. Use the link on screen or down in the description to download Opera GX for free today. And again, massive shout out to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. So recently, the streamer Arab... 
Fraser bathroom came out and announced that him and his longtime partner Britt would be separating after five years of being together. Man, I don't really like talking about my personal life too much on stream, but yeah. It happened. Um, going through that, it's been tough. However, though, there was another streamer called Darius IRL, and he basically alleged that the reason why Arab and Brit split off from each other is because Arab was cheating on her. Apparently, at the minute the situation with Darius, uh, he streams on Kick, uh, although currently he's trying to get his account unbanned from Twitch. Apparently, the reason for him being banned was some joke he made about men being electrocuted, and that resulted in a ban. So here in this clip, bizarrely, Darius is basically claiming that it was his roommate that caused the divorce between Arab and Brit. My roommate caused the divorce between him and his wife. Supposedly, with no proof by the way, Arab was caught kissing this girl and Brit was nearby and it, you know, spawned into this whole fight. Apparently they were kissing at a recent event, don't leave, don't leave. but his wife was there. It was a whole thing. They had a whole fight, but Arab, honestly, he's a cheater. Which then led to the divorce. But again, when he makes this claim on stream, there is no proof whatsoever. There's no footage. There's there's no, there's not even any message screenshots. Th th there is nothing at all. So later that night, Darius runs into Arab uh, while they're basically out in the town and ends up confronting Arab and immediately calls him out for being a loser. <laughs> So the two are bickering, you know, just having like a back and forth. And Arab actually claims that the girl kissed him, even though he didn't really touch her. Oh, no, literally Why kissed me and I didn't touch her. And then it escalates because Darius claims that Arab is someone that, like, even though he's married and has a child, apparently goes to strip clubs. Uh, because you couldn't keep your girl. Oh, you can't stop I gotta go to strip clubs. Right, Dude, you literally got divorced! Arab gets upset, calls him a loser, and then eventually takes a swing at him. You're, You're gonna a lose! Loser. Don't do it! Your life's over? Oh, stop, 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 They both keep fighting until other people get involved that are watching and, you know, separate the two, and then they both just go their separate ways. Please, 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 please. Now, Darius did put out a tweet saying that he wasn't going to press charges towards Arab and took accountability for leaking things while he was drunk. But a short time later, he actually ended up deleting that tweet. So there is also the possibility he might still be pressing charges. So that was situation number one that happened around TwitchCon. I really wish that was the only happening that happened. So there's another streamer called DBR666. Now, I'm not sure what happened during lockdown, but there are so many streamers like this guy. They're basically IRL trolls that just try to clip farm as much as possible. They're basically all just doing the equivalent of Neon, like just acting like an absolute douchebag in public with, you know, varying degrees of success. The most recent happenings he's had was trying to get cartoon mascots to let him twerk on them. Oh, Stitch wants no! a piece. <laughs> no, no! What the fuck? <laughs> oh, as well as getting shot by paintballs from... <laughs> Fousey tube. He's scared of getting shot. What a baby. Who, what's his name? DBR. That's the. Come on, Nick. That's DBR. He's the one who said G0. Got his ass. Now, I do want to clarify that it's not what he did in this situation, but it's his clip that got attention. So you might remember at the beginning of the video, I talked about that train that pulled up outside TwitchCon, which basically had everyone stun locked for the best part of half an hour. But even worse than that, this train might have actually nearly killed someone. DBR was recording an interaction between a fan and another kick streamer called Shuvi. So as DBR is chatting with this Shuvi fan, a random guy pushes Shuvi head first into the oncoming train. Yeah. Oh, chill, bro. Chill out, bro. That's dangerous. So, yeah, I don't really think I need to get into the dynamics of why pushing someone onto a moving train is a bad idea. He could have easily slipped and fell down, and then he would have had to reset character. I think that is one of the most toxic things about the entire streaming culture at the minute. It is like, you need to get a clip. You will do anything to get a clip. And I'm not saying that Shuvi set that up or anything. He obviously had no idea that he was going to get pushed into a train. The guy is literally shook afterwards. But the fact that the guy doesn't even realize what he did is like really, really bad. Even all the streamers are like okay that that's too much of a clip bro that's too much of a clip and instead of like you know apologizing and be like i went too far bro sorry he just ends up flipping off the camera instead now shibi did end up tweeting later saying that he wasn't harmed and basically he made it like he's okay i mean i can imagine some people watching that clip being like oh he just bumped against a train who cares but again like it's a moving vehicle there could have been a final destination multitude of ways of how that could have ended terribly and then he tweets about finding the guy was basically a fan nice fan interaction 
there. Apparently joined his Discord server and then even asked Shuvi if he wanted to drive in his car on stream. So anyway, back to DBR who actually clipped that entire situation. What did he do outside of that? Well, he basically took it upon himself to go on a worldwide harassment spree. First up, he went to the infamous Fresh and Fit podcast. If you haven't seen that, I did a video covering those guys a couple months ago. I think I called it a uh, Sigma podcast to cringe or something like that. The entire point of those podcasts is basically women le bad. And believe me, I'm on the same I'm on the same opinion. Women are le bad. But oh my god, bro, eventually you have to shut up and realize that you need to do a little bit of self-improvement. You cannot just blame women for everything all day, every day. So he runs up to the hosts of Fresh and Fit and he tries to hug them and then kissing them on the neck, which uh, Fresh ends up backing away because obviously that is not Sigma behavior. Okay, that was actually hilarious. It's kind of funny because he's doing it to like a crowd that would be like thinking he's funny as well. Kind of based. Now, regardless of my opinion of the Fresh and Fit podcast, even though I did find it to be a little bit funny, it's obviously a little bit uncalled for running up to people like randomly kissing them. And then DBR runs into NMP LOL and Wake Wilder, two very popular streamers while in the artist alley at the convention. So here he ends up rubbing his head against Nick and then acts like he's like rubbing against his nipple. Like, honestly, what I'm going to do is play the clip side by side because this isn't even his bit. You know that viral clip of like some random child fan going up to Markiplier and rubbing his head against him and Markiplier feels really uncomfortable. What he is doing is exactly what that kid is doing. So then Nick was like put in a very awkward situation because he's not really a chronic clip farmer himself. And then he politely asks the guy to stop doing that. Because the thing is, when you're a big streamer with a natural reputation and then you have a clip farmer come up to you, you're put in a really awkward situation because it's like, do you want to play along? You kind of can, but then in turn, you're actually having this guy actively leech off you, growing his popularity. And also you could be just mentally sane and not want to fuck with that at all. And then DBR says hello to Wake and they shake hands and then DBR starts to kiss his hand. It's really just painfully awkward interactions and it did end up with DBR being banned from the event. And then he goes on this weird rant saying that like all the big Twitch streamers are holding like diddy parties despite the fact that he got thrown out which even gets a laugh from the cops. I swear to God, last night they were having a diddy party, no cameras, nobody's allowed, just the partners. How the fuck's that because they're doing <laughs> fucking... By the looks of it, this DBR guy doesn't have the best rep on the platform. And honestly, I think instead of harassing people at TwitchCon, he should get into stand-up because like him making the cops laugh is probably more entertaining than anything else he did at TwitchCon. It kills me, bro. Like they're on shift and they have to like look away from him because they're laughing so much. <laughs> he then goes on to meet the big OG XQC. Of course he had to. If anyone could make you famous from getting a clip with them, it would be XQC. So XQC is out there like just head to toe dripped in Gucci as usual. I make that joke at his expense, but I'm the one that wears a PS5 shirt most days. I think the PS5 shirt has become so synonymous with my character that there's even loads of viral memes about it. I fucking hate you and hope you die. I like playing games that are good. I actually don't know who made that. It's going to be like a turbo renter. It's probably Dolan or something. Dolan, Dolan sent it to me one day in a group chat and he just will not tell me where he found it. So I think that he actually was bitter enough to make it. <laughs> so, no, he made that. He 100% made that. It's too snide. He 100% made that. Look, I, I fucking hate this, bro. Look at this. I, I posted it on the Discord server right now. And they're just reacting with the pregnancy emoji. Like, look at look how much they're spamming the trans flag as well. Like, guaranteed, half of them are trans and half of them are doing it ironically. <laughs> so he goes up to XQC, basically saying he wants to suck his dick and needs the clout from him. Which, honestly, chronic clip farmers, they would actually suck off XQC for a, a droplet of clout. And then after XQC awkwardly walks off, ignores him, he eventually gives up chase and then goes on this weird ramble about how he's just clip farming and that he's Kaisena. I'm Kaisena! Keep in mind, the entire time that he was walking around filming, he was wearing a woman's dress as well. He then goes up to a Wolverine cosplay and continues his, you know, sucking off saga. And then he runs into the most chronic clip farmer of them all, FousyTube. And FousyTube actually has security that pushes him away. I like how FousyTube's logic is like, I'm a clip farmer, but you, you're too much of a clip farmer. I'm above the rest. What's up, Fousy? How you doing? When we're going to turn the bots off, Fousy? When does the bots turn off? When do the bots turn off? Turn the bots off. You want to turn the bots off? 
I saw this bizarre rant that FuzzyTube had the other day on stream, and it was like saying how who are the best streamers in the world. He put himself as like number one, and then he put Ice Poseidon as number two, because most of the IRL streamers wouldn't be a thing without Ice Poseidon building the foundations, those horrible, horrible foundations. And then he put like Neon at like 100, which was actually kind of funny. But we're talking IRL streamers, Rank. bitch! Rank top three. I run this game. Rank top three. Huh? Yeah, top three. Top three IRL streamers? That's so hard. You got Fusi at one. He can be so unlikable, and he's definitely God tier grifter, but yeah. It the thing is with Fuzi, he can actually be funny sometimes. See, I can't disrespect Ice because he created the, the, the IRL streaming. So we're just going to throw Ice at two. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. And three, not Neon. He's like 100. If there's 100 people on the list, <laughs> Neon's 100. All right, who's number Worse. three? I like how even he realizes, yeah, Neon, nah, that guy, that guy sucks. Like, how can you be that good at clip farming that you make all the other clip farmers hate you? Like, that, that is insane. DBR was also caught harassing Knut. I'm not sure why he's doing that. Kanot is probably one of the most intimidating streamers you could imagine. He could face plant you into the wall. He's basically going on about Miss Kiff's uh, previous allegations. Why is Miss Kiff Just covering up away. for sexual allegations? Do you believe covering up for se sexual allegations really is okay? Nice you think it's really sex. nice? Yeah, you think it's good? Wow, you are a sick man. And Twitch, right. Twitch support you? And even went up to extra Emily to ask her about the situation. And what, what do you think about uh, Miss Kiff covering up sexual allegations? Oh, I don't know. Thank you. you like I'm gonna. Uh, thank you, DVR. Oh, okay. It's really nice to meet you. Yes, have a great night. He went up to the CEO, Dan Clancy. Something about Twitch streamers working for free. To pay your employees. So I'd like you. I'd like you to address the situation about making your employees work for free. Do you not believe that's that's. That's, that's slave labor. So yeah, basically just going around having like any kind of interaction with a positive or negative, hopefully to stir up some kind of clipping to get famous. Apparently as well, a couple of weeks prior, DBR actually interrupted a Halo major live event, you know, for the five people that still play Halo. That was on Twitch and he went around screaming, fuck Twitch. And the entire time he was dressed as Frozone from The Incredibles. Please, please, please. Can I just, can I, please, please, please. Just please one. Can I take you? I'm a streamer, so I understand the TOS. We got Keep Frozen. Stuck is the best streaming platform twitch pay your employees slave Ah, you're done 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 i find it crazy how there's no security there as well like one of the people hosting has to actually get out of their seat to eject him now dbr has been temporarily banned from kick for his actions he then later tweeted out that his actions do not represent kick and if he did this on any other platform he would have just been labeled as a regular streamer versus a kick streamer he also goes on to say that there's a lot of wholesome streamers on kick but everyone just waits for the bad person to do something so they can all blame kick i mean i'll be honest like I don't even mean this as a snide. I don't know a single good kick streamer, like a wholesome one. I, I cannot name one. I can't. Because people that are like chronic clip farmers have unfortunately gave kick such a negative reputation. Are there good people on kick? Probably, but I can't. I couldn't name a single one. You know when that kid Matan Evans said to that girl on the podcast, name 10 books? I think a harder question would be name 10 good kick streamers. Now, the clips that I talked about at the beginning of the video from Erob and Darius having that confrontation about Erob allegedly cheating. This has got a lot of attention online, including from other streamers talking about it. For example, a very popular streamer, Tectone, actually went on stream to rant about the clips and how ridiculous it was to basically harass innocent people. Harassing innocent people for no fucking reason. It's a joke. The fact that Extra Emily had to run away from a kick streamer because she felt unsafe is insane. It's insane. And the only thought that I've had in my head is, damn, I wish I was there when it happened. I mean, there's people pushing tr people into moving trains. Ludwig tweeted about it as well, basically saying that people on kick are the worst part of kick, that just because they're chronic clip farmers, they don't realize that they're not making the actual content to succeed. And then Knut replied, saying that apparently one of them asked his 12-year-old daughter to go to the clubs with her, and now they've been banned, thankfully. Even Rob Breslow, known as Slasher on Twitter, shared a tweet about how terrible the kick platform is. Going to TwitchCon to stream on another platform while explicitly being as annoying, obnoxious, and insufferable as possible does not instill confidence on why people should stream there instead of Twitch. If you don't know who Slasher is, he was one of the first people to like publicly allude about the Dr. Disrespect stuff like years before it came out. To which afterwards then, Ed Cravens responds doubling down, saying that Kick has banned anyone that violated their IRL policies. And then of course, your boy, the OG, the GOAT, XQC. Is that a dog? Oh. 
Cole, the man I cannot stop cosplaying as, went on stream to talk about his side because with him, it's a little bit complicated, right? He does stream on Twitch. He's a Twitch streamer, but he's also got that big fat contract with Kick as well. It, it, dude, dude, a ban isn't gonna fix that that um that gap in in, in um in mental or, or or restraint, dude. Like you need added re re repercussions, dude. You get the fucking police involved, okay? As 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 the other guy like pushing it like on, on the uh, like on the train or whatever. What the fuck is that about, brother? We almost had to swing hands at this fucking scum lord. I almost fucking crashed the fuck out, dude. I I really see red, okay? Listen, oh no. The funny thing is, looking at XQC's chat, I think they actually hate him more than my fan base hate me. Like, he's talking about how he's seeing Red and about to crash out. That never would have happened, by the way. But yeah, you can see chat saying, you know how to fight? Gonna crash out. W crash out, unk. And then obviously everyone just spamming the Osho speed gif. <laughs> Oh, it's so, it's so good, man. It's so good. So yeah, my brave statement, copyright trademarked incoming for the video, but harassing people in public for clips isn't cool. I mean, the thing is, some of these people that are like chronic clip farmers, they are talented. And like when I was saying about DBR earlier, like doing stand up, like genuinely, the guy is jokes. Like some of the stuff he says is pretty funny. It's not funny when he goes up, harasses someone, but you know, like making those cops laugh. I actually thought, oh my God, this guy could actually like do a bit without like, you know, it being at someone else's expense. I think what clip farmers need to realize is like all they do is get like the top post on live stream fail like lsf and then maybe put on some other subreddit or something and all that happens is you get your 15 seconds of fame but then you get absolutely vilified uh how can i put this in a video game reference to the power audience uh th this is like uh fallout new vegas right the game that all the trans people like th this is like going into good springs and gunning everyone down wait no that's a bad example because then you can go to the powder gangers uh well what's what's a good example here all right i got one this is like finding an empty scroll in fear and hunger when you're streaming and then you type big chungus in every single verse. You've wasted the best item in the game for a funny moment. Is it worth it? Maybe for the clip, but then you've fucked yourself for the rest of the playthrough. Yeah, there we go. A, a reference that like seven people watching the video will get. riding your mama. Oh.